In this lecture, we're going to expand on the last two lectures and talk a little bit more about selecting a channel. So when I talk about channels, I'm talking about a sales channel, um, the way that we communicate to a customer and the way that we sell a product. And I always wrap communication in with the selling process because that's really what it's about. As we present our value proposition in different ways, our value prop proposition is perceived differently. And so when you're selecting this sales channel right out the gate, it's important that you understand these ramifications of how you're going to present it. So let's review a little bit of the basics real quick. So the goal of a startup, we talked in the very first lectures, uh, a startup is a temporary organization that's designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. So it's important that we find something that we can do more than once, but that we can also scale it and get the volume that's going to be sustainable. And sometimes our margins are so thin that we need a dramatic volume in order for us to really be able to flourish as a business. Now, getting to positive revenue, revenue flow um, to build the value of your business is very important. Um, positive revenue is the moment where um, you're actually receiving enough revenue to cover the expenses. Um, revenue increases your runway uh, against your burn rate. And so every startup has some idea of how much money they have to work with. And if you're starting to get revenue in the door, then you're using less of your reserve and your resources. And so additional revenue allows you to work longer before you hit that wall. And we'll talk a little bit more about in some of the channels here. So how do we select the channel? So the most obvious thing that we have to think about is the economics of that channel. Can we make money inside of that channel at scale? Um, are we going to always be selling at such a low price that we never make money? Now, sometimes there are channels where you actually do lose money at first, uh, especially in a retail situation. Sometimes the retailer wants you to bring the product in, put it on the shelf, uh, stock the shelves, observe the shelves. Retailers get very demanding about how they want you to service that product because they want only to be responsible once that product is really selling. And if you're a new product, it's really on you to prove to the retailer that you're selling a great product. And so um, sometimes you'll lose money just in infrastructure cost and you know time and management. But once you get some sell through, um, the sales will pick up enough uh, hopefully that they will cover all these added expenses. Now, um, there was an example of a business, a bad example, uh, that I was running years and years ago where we were actually selling and installing windows and doors into some uh, rehab apartment buildings. So it was kind of a, a gross old apartment building with hundreds and hundreds of units. And there was some uh, state money in the state of California that was set aside to rehab some of these older uh, apartment buildings. And so uh, this contractor had gotten this grant, was going in and rehabbing this apartment complex, but you know had really like tried to work us down on the price. Well, I had a business partner who wasn't very good at math that actually went in and, and agreed to a price and said, yes, we will put in a brand new window in each opening for X number of dollars. Well, when I went back and reviewed what we purchased the window for, our material costs, our cost of labor, uh, the time in the truck, the, the, the wear on the tools, uh, there was no way that I could make the profitability work on each individual unit, except for even though we were losing 5 or $10 every time we put a window in, uh, my business partner was absolutely sure that we would make it up in the volume. You got to be very careful. Sometimes something that is unprofitable is just going to get exponentially more unprofitable. Not everything corrects itself. And so you need to make sure that as you're selecting a channel and understanding the initial economics that you know if those are things that are going to rectify themselves. Because sometimes it will make money to lose money or it will make sense to lose money just so you can make more money later. And sometimes they're really the economics are such that you should make money all along. And if you're not going to make money at first, then it's just a bad deal. And so be very careful to evaluate that correctly. So how do we select a channel in terms of capacity? So sometimes us as a business, we have an idea, we've built a prototype, but how are we really going to fulfill on what we need to fulfill on? And so I've seen this same mistake happen where somebody comes up with a product, they prototype it out, they get somebody that says, hey, I'd like to buy you know, 10,000 units of that product. Well, how do you manufacture it? Going to a third-party manufacturer sometimes might be so expensive 
and you have to front so much money that it doesn't make sense. And sometimes setting up the machinery yourself to do it is just wildly expensive. And so you can't go broke just to fulfill on a contract. You've got to make sure that you know your equipment costs, you know your material costs, that you've got the right suppliers available, and that you've got the right employees. Because sometimes the employee that you can afford is not a good enough uh, you know, skilled employee to really hit the profit margin. And so this is another hard area um, as a founder that you know, we, we hire the person we can afford as opposed to the person that we need. And it's very important for you to really evaluate who am I hiring, why am I hiring them, and know when it's appropriate to take a risk. Many, many times in previous startups have I uh, hired somebody that was, you know, even as much as double the payroll budget that I had uh, for a particular position, but I did it because I knew that that person would pay off a lot faster and be a better long-term asset than somebody that I could afford that met my budget. Now, obviously, you have to have that money in the bank. If you have no money, then you really have no option. Uh, it's not right to ask people to do things for you for free with the hope that someday you'll figure out your business. And so you've got to be careful to have the integrity to you know, hire people correctly. But you know, sometimes it's about, hey, I have this money. I had it allocated to something else. But you know what? I'm going to make a decision to allocate it to my payroll budget, hire a better employee because they're going to ultimately get me to the finish line a lot faster. Um, so another consideration in selecting a channel is timing. So what is the right time to go into a particular area? So how much runway do you have? Do you have enough money and, and is your burn rate such that you know you can continue in that channel while, while it builds? So that typically is what the problem is, is I know I can be successful in this channel, but it's gonna take a while to build that channel. Um, is there a plan for now and how you're gonna make money now and then a different plan for later? Uh, sometimes the channels we go into today are going to be very different than the channels we go into down the road. And then is the market seasonal? Uh, some people start a business, you know, right in Q4 during the holiday season, and they have a big rush, a big boom, and then they get to January, middle or end of January, look around and realize we have no sales. We staffed up and we got operations going as though that Q4 was going to be our entire year. So it's important that you understand uh, the channel and how that channel reacts based on seasonality. Some businesses have no seasonality, but a lot of businesses really do. Um, are there international concerns? Are there things going on in other parts of the world? Uh, you know, Carnival in Brazil has affected my business before. Chinese New Year has affected a business before. And so it's important that you know who your partners and suppliers are and how that affects your materials, your finished goods. And so those are considerations as well. Uh, as you choose that channel. So um, understanding pricing, customer segmentation, and then how you reach through that channel, all of these last few lectures fit together as you make a decision of how you're going to ultimately go to market. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next lectures.